My name is Alex Rodriguez reminding you, you don't need a contra, you need a team of pros. Hey, what's up guys? Alex here with Bay Cities Construction. Today we've got a show we're talking about kitchen remodeling. We're talking about how to get an open uh, floor plan concept. We're going to be going over some of the projects that we've done and we're actually going to go over some of the projects that we're currently working on. So don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Open kitchen floor plans. What does it take to get one done? It may be a little bit more complicated than you think. So we're going to go into it. We're going to dive deep uh, onto it. I've also written a blog article that talks about the different aspects of an open kitchen floor plan and what they cost. So stay tuned. We're going to go ahead and put that in the link below. But uh, let's talk before we get into the new stuff. Let's talk about the old stuff. So last week we did the Great California Shakeout. And uh, we covered that in uh, episode 33. So you can watch it on Facebook and obviously on YouTube. So check that out. So tonight's episode, we're going to be talking about an open kitchen concept. It's the trend. It's probably been the most asked for uh, component of a kitchen remodel over the last five years. And some of these jobs are getting kind of big, kind of expensive, kind of complicated. So I want to go over some of the things that you should be considering. We want to talk about whether you need an engineer or not. We're going to talk about our um, few different projects that we have. We've got one that we've got great pictures for where we are in active construction. And we're going to show you one that we finished last year in, um, here in L.A. So let's, uh, let's get into it. So what is an open concept kitchen? So typically it involves removing a wall and you have one big space, one nice big open space. And uh, that means you, you're gonna remove a load bearing wall. In this case, we did remove a load bearing wall. We put in a beam that weighs like 1,500 pounds, could be 1,600 pounds. It took like about 14 guys to get that beam in there. It was crazy. In fact, that's the beam that you see up here. It's that new, you see all the existing frame, uh, the existing uh, ceiling joists, and uh, that new beam, that's a, that's a glue lamb or a PSL beam. It's a manufactured beam. So typically, uh, we have to remove a wall, and this is the same job with the wall as it, as it was. And you can tell that on one side, on the left, you had like a kitchen dining area, and then over on the right was the living room and dining area there. So those are the before pictures. So this is me standing in the kitchen um, facing the back the back of the house. And uh, you can see we, we skeletonized the wall. So before we demo the wall, we have to prop it up and make sure that um, we support the roof system and the ceiling system. So it's, uh, it's pretty, uh, pretty detailed. But by the way, before you demo, if you're considering doing a kitchen model, make sure that your contractor um, orders uh, some laboratory testing. You're going to have to check for asbestos, and you also want to check for lead if your house is built before, um, whatever it is, 79, something, 69. Anyway, you should check for them anyway, because you never really know um, when any of those components were introduced into the house. And once you start demoing, it becomes airborne and it spreads through the house. So you want to make sure you don't you get... You verify that you don't have any lead or asbestos, and if you do have lead or asbestos, you have it remediated before you start demoing. So this is a picture of us. Uh, we're probably a few weeks in here now, and this is a picture from the front door, and you can see that to the left in this area here, this is where we're going to have our kitchen. This is the old dining room, which will still be used as a dining area. And then this is going to be the open family room area. And then in the background here, we removed all that PV stone. So we're going to redo that section there. And then we installed this tremendously enormous um, beam. And we also had to create some pads because we're transferring all of the weight that was here. We're transferring it over to the posts. So we put in uh, new concrete pads on both sides along with a new four by beam. So that's, that's 
that's part of what it's going to take. So yes, we did have to get some engineering for this. Yes, we had to relocate uh, a lot of stuff. We had to relocate electrical. We had to relocate. Um, luckily, the HVAC unit or the heating system was off to the side, so that wasn't too bad. But you can see the the areas that we stripped along the beam, that area there, that's where we put in the support um, to hold up the the ceilings. And, and there's definitely wood members that are holding up the roof rafters. So all of that stuff has to stay connected. Otherwise, you risk things sagging and moving around, and that's not good. All right, so in here, what you're looking at here is this is probably one of the biggest hidden costs that you're going to experience with an open floor plan, and that's going to be to get the floor all the same. In this case, the homeowner, the homeowners have decided to install tile. When we install tile, we remove all of the, sub, the existing subfloor because houses built at this era have very thin subfloors. They have probably a half inch or maybe five eighths of an inch plywood or worse, it could be diagonal one by sixes. Anyway, you have to remove that. You cannot put tile on any of that stuff. It has too much flex and you're going to have nothing but trouble it's going to be a nightmare um, with the grout cracking, the tiles cracking, all of that stuff. So in order to eliminate that, we install uh, one and an eighth tongue and groove plywood. And that stuff is super expensive, okay? If you want to do a budget remodel, you know, don't remove the wall and don't replace the subfloor with one and an eighth. It's expensive, but it performs the best. When you glue that down to the floor joist and you screw it in, with a nice tight pattern, the floor feels solid and it's very quiet, no squeakiness, no weird sounds. The diaphragm of the entire subfloor is truly a quality, quality job. So let's take a closer look at these beams. This bad boy here, man, this is like, a, I think this is like a, this is an eight by 22, if memory serves me right. And it is that big because it's like 42 feet long. It's massive. So we propped up, we cut the, the, the floor joists where they went over the old wall and we propped everything up and then we removed the wall and then we slide, we slid it in. It was a lot more complicated than that. I wish we would have had some video. We have another video of a job we did in Torrance. Um, that the day that we put the beam in this one, we installed it on, on a Saturday. So it was a little crazy and uh, we didn't video it. Sorry, but, but we'll, uh, we'll put the link in for the other video. If you want to see us, um, go through the pain and suffering of getting one of these bad boys in, we certainly, um, it certainly is actually informative because you have an idea. This one's actually bigger than the one that we installed in Torrance. This was in RPV. So most, uh, now I want to just bring, uh, before I forget, I want to bring some attention to this. You can see these little kickers coming up off the uh, roof system. So those are very important that they get reinstalled once you have the beam in, because that helps prevent the roof rafters from bowing and, and doing all sorts of weird deformation. So it's really important that all of that stuff get added back in and not put any weight on these rafters. You never want to put one of these kickers um, on these rafters. It'll cause the drywall to crack later. You want all of the weight, all of the weight coming from any kickers to sit on the beam. That beam is designed to, um, not only to hold the, its own weight, it's definitely able to hold quite a bit of, of weight uh, from the roof and from the ceiling rafters so it's a uh, it's massive it's beautiful it's amazing it's expensive i think that beam by itself was like three grand plus delivery this is another project that we did in sherman oaks and same thing where where this cardboard is now is where the wall used to be so we put actually two probably three psl beams in here and um and you can see that if you do this correctly, if you space out the lights correctly, it looks like one room. It looks really cool. It looks like the house was always built like that. Almost all the new homes, they have that layout. So the idea is that you 
when we remodel that you can't tell where the old was, where the old and the new, you know, you want to be able to have it, you know, if you have a good amount of talent and you thought it through, you shouldn't be able to tell where the old wall used to be. So there you go. It's another angle. By the way, this room used to have a chimney where the, these couches are was like almost a library. They were like these um, shelves and stuff. It, it looks completely different. It just looks like a nice open open floor plan kitchen. By the way, those floors, if you like those floors, they're engineered urban floor um, planks. They look really cool. Those floors were, were pretty neat. We're an urban floor dealer, by the way. Hey, so this is probably the the my favorite kitchen that we did last year. Uh, it's in Gardena, kind of LA Gardena area. And um, we removed the wall and stuff. I'll show you some, some pictures of this as we I mean, we did a, a review on just this kitchen before. I just want to give you a couple of um, other angles. Anyhow, so the next question you may have when you're talking about an open floor plan kitchen is, do I need engineering plans? If you're going to remove a wall, it's probably going to be load-bearing, and yes, you do. You're, you're not only going to need engineering plans, you're going to need um, architectural plans. So you got to show the existing floor plan, you got to show the proposed floor plan and then the engineering section is going to be um, it's going to cover like the structural stuff like did you put in new a new foundation did you alter it what's your structural framing look like if you're going to use a, a glue lamb or a PSL beam those big heavy beams uh, what those dimensions are what the specs are on that and you're going to need structural calculations one thing that's really important to take into account is the seismic force earthquakes you know we live in earthquake country we've done a lot of earthquake videos recently so when you remove this wall most of those walls have bracing so you have to deal with that right the engineer is going to have to deal with that because you're making the structure think about like um, your house as a box you know it is kind of a box and when you remove that wall that separates the living room and the dining room you're you're creating one big box out of two little boxes it turns out that seismic wise two little boxes are a little stronger than one box so you have to deal with the seismic impact um, that you're going to be faced with by removing the wall so think about that it's not a big deal you can definitely remove the wall but you just have to ha take that into account so most people are asking how much money will it cost well you can expect to uh, pay for for engineering. Actually, it's not going to be it's not going to be that much. The I think the if you were doing a home edition or something like that, you could expect to pay architectural engineering about ten k. But for for the architectural engineering for um, a major remodel where you have structural work, you have foundation work, you got to deal with some seismic stuff. Uh, Eight thousand bucks, somewhere between six and ten, and it, it really will just depend on. How much work has to get done if you have a two a second story above um, those types of things if you're doing a home addition and you're remodeling the entire uh, structure for sure you you know you could expect to pay uh, somewhere between ten fifteen thousand dollars for the full set of plans the other thing to consider is that you may need some you may need some interior design work um, so that can you know that could be a few thousand bucks also so those are again some things to consider, and uh, you'll you're gonna have to pay the plan check fees and all that. Now this I think this project, if you were to say what's the total, what's the total set of costs before you break ground between your architectural engineering, interior design, and uh, the plan check fees, which are probably gonna be three four thousand bucks. Some cities as much as six thousand. You could be paying before you break ground for a large kitchen remodeling project you could pay fifteen twenty thousand dollars in in different fees right so so keep that in in mind when you're um, trying to figure out the totality of your deal so let's talk about some unforeseen costs but before we do that let's take a quick break and i'll be right back don't go anywhere
kitchen you want today from Bay Cities Construction in the Southern California and Los Angeles area. There is no better company who takes time out of the equation to get you a detailed plan of what your new kitchen will look like. Get your design plans done, your interior design plans done, and entire project scope done right now. Get your finished kitchen in 90 days or less. We are the best in the Los Angeles and Southern California area, and there's no need to shop anywhere else. Just get started with Bay Cities Construction. Go to baycitiesconstruction.com. That's baycitiesconstruction.com. Hey, so we're back. Thanks for staying tuned. Hey, so let's talk about unforeseen costs and things to consider. The biggest unforeseen cost is termite damage. If you've got a window that's been leaking, flashing that's been leaking, you've got uh, roof problems, any of those types of things, you're probably going to have a little termite damage. You may have a little bit of dry rot. Um, in some cases, if you've got if you've had like a foundation leak or anything like that, anything along those lines, those things tend to be covered up. So when we do a demo, you end up uncovering those things. So this is a job that we did uh, probably a couple years ago. The uh, dishwasher hose had a small leak, and it was just spraying the underside of the cabinets. So this is the mold, the bad mold, the mold you don't want. And uh, this is the mold that makes your eyes teary. And it has like a funky, uh, sour odor. You don't want that. But in this case, we opened it up and we had some mold, some mold issues. The other unknown is when we test. Obviously, we're going to test for asbestos. If you've got some um, transit pipes that are... You know, the thing is that asbestos is, I think most people don't realize it. It it was actually a great building material. It has really good insulation properties. It has the ability to keep things together for a long time. But it's extremely bad for you if you inhale the dust. So before we do demo, if we find any asbestos, we're going to have it removed. It's going to be abated. But uh, it can be a little pricey. The pipes and stuff, they're typically under 1000 bucks. The bigger problem is if, if you have asbestos in the acoustic insulation or if you have it in the glue some houses have um they'll have linoleum and the the asbestos it's a silica they use it as a binder in the glue and then it's got to be removed so it could be a little pricey if you've got a lot of square footage of um, vinyl to remove the typically those transit pipes it's not a big deal older houses uh do not have typically have not been upgraded as in the electrical system hasn't been upgraded so that's got to get done this is i don't know if you, people have ever seen this but this is what an old school fuse literally a fuse box looks like so you want it to look like this bad boy here um, these are breakers the new breakers <clears throat> because uh, some new regulation kicked in at the beginning of the year you have to have arc fault breakers and those breakers are a little thicker in the um, in the diameter so you can fit less of them so even if you have a 200 amp box you're probably going to need a sub panel somewhere because those breakers are so thick um, they really take up almost twice as much space as the old old ones did so that just means that you're going to need more space your amperage may be perfectly fine your capacity may be perfectly fine but you don't have enough space to add the circuits most people don't realize this New kitchens require about 10, 12 circuits, and some of the larger kitchens may even require like 14 circuits. So you're definitely going to need a lot of space for your circuit capacity, electrical capacity needs. Another unforeseen deal is you got to replace uh, any galvanized or corroded pipes. Uh, the one on the left is very common for houses where none of the plumbing has been re replaced. So... Oftentimes, we have to replace the sewer line. That's kind of like a, an unforeseen bummer. But believe me, when you have the floors opened up, that's the best time to do it. If you're going to do it at any time, that's the best time to do it because you don't have a lot of room under the house to do it otherwise. So let's talk about some tips and tricks. We'll talk about kitchen bathroom model tips and tricks. I'm going to give you a couple little quick tips and tricks. All right. First thing you should do is realize that you, you you are in charge of your budget if you've got extravagant taste and you 
love the fancy life, it's going to be more expensive. Okay? You're going to pick things that are fancier and nicer and higher quality. And that's going to equate to more money. Right? Which is fine. Which is fine. Okay? You just have to understand that. That you are in control of your budget. So what we do, the way that we work is we ask um, property owners to tell us what their budget is so that we can design it to the budget. That way, we understand where we need to go be shopping and what type of materials we should be shopping for. We're, that'll also help us guide customers or clients through the decision-making process. So if you don't, most people don't realize that removing a wall is probably going to trigger about 30, 40 grand worth of work. So if you want, if you have a $25,000 budget for your kitchen remodel, you're not going to remove a wall. It's just not going to happen. Okay, if you've got a hundred thousand or eighty thousand dollars for a kitchen remodel, then yeah, you can remove a wall. That's possible. So knowing your budget, understanding what you want to, the totality of, of, of the scope of the work. Uh, I would also recommend that you focus on the things that you really need. So many kitchens have issues with how they function. Like you can't fit more than two people in there. Um, there's issues with storage. Uh, some people want very specific type of storage. Those are all. Those are all have to. Those things have to be categorized in the, in the absolutely need category. The fanciness of the finishes. Those could be on the want category, where if your budget allows, you can get it. So always plan on a little bit extra. Make sure you have a little bit of money left over. Don't 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 put in all your budget in all at once. Have a little reserve. Some people say ten or fifteen percent. I, I don't know how much, but if your if your project's going to cost fifty thousand bucks, it's probably prudent for you to have another ten thousand dollars, twelve thousand dollars. It's probably prudent. That way, um, maybe we have to repair something that comes along the way, or maybe you want to choose to upgrade. I don't know. It's very prudent to have a little bit more money. If need be, have some financing ready. You know, get a little line of credit. Maybe you have some cash to do the deal. Maybe some of it you use a HELOC loan, a line of credit against your house or something like that. But have a little bit of money extra, a little bit of padding extra. That way if something comes up, you're not all stressed out and uh, freaking out about it. So you may need help with interior design. We can definitely help you with that. Uh, a lot of times people tell me, hey, I have an idea of what I want, um, but I do need a little bit of help with the design. You should definitely get some help with design. Whether you're, you know, let's say you're out of, out of our service area and you hire somebody else to do it, you should definitely hire somebody who can help you with the design because the tighter your design is, the more the, the the more clear you are on what exactly is going to happen on the job, then your contractor can give you a more accurate price. It'll be closer to a quote versus an estimate. And if you want to know more about the difference between a quote and an estimate, we're definitely going to have an article linked uh, for you for that. Okay, so you're going to need engineering plans if you're moving a wall for sure. And if you're adding to the house for sure, you're going to need architectural and engineering. So these uh, are things that you should uh, budget for and um, have a little bit extra. Hiring the right team. I always tell you, I always tell prospect customers, you want to hire somebody that you feel you can work with. You're going to be working with these individuals for months. And it's going to be stressful and it's going to be messy. And you got to be able to trust each other. Contractors got to be able to trust you that you're going to pay on time and that you're going to do your end of the deal. And you have to trust the contractor that they're going to complete the work in a timely manner, that it's going to be good quality, and that it's going to be something that you want. Okay, so the relationship between you and the person doing the work is really, really important. Some people get all confused, not confused, but super hyper focused on, on the quotes and on the estimates and this guy was five grand more and that guy was three grand less and this and that. And the, the truth is, I want you to understand one absolute fact. Almost 100% of all construction projects never cost what the contract says, okay? There's gonna be changes along the way, for sure, absolutely. 
The question is, did you hire somebody that you feel comfortable with, that you can trust, that understands what you want, that, it can, that understands your intention for behind why you're doing this project? Many people remodel because they want to increase the, uh, the value of their house. Some people remodel because they have always wanted a dream kitchen. Other people remodel because they're uh, blending families, you know, a couple is getting together and they have kids from a previous thing and they want to make the house bigger, more functional with uh, with the added people living in the house. So there's a bunch of different reasons. And it's important that you work with somebody that understands your intention of why you're doing this so that they can get you the perfect look for the price that you can afford to do. So these are, that is really important that you pick the person you're going to work with. Uh, another thing too, consider this is, you know, you may be talking to a salesperson. You may not actually, you may want to uh, take some time to meet the person that's going to be your project manager or the person you're going to work with on a day-to-day -day basis during the construction because that's going to be your point of contact and that's going to be the person you have the most interaction with. So consider those things. Um, you want to make sure that you're hiring a team, not just one individual because you need a team to build this. You need a team of, of pros. You need tile people and plumbers and carpenters and finished carpenters and masons and all of this stuff. So it's important. Let's talk a little bit about some things that can impact the price or the cost. Um, in, this, in this scenario here, we've got a vanity. This is a bathroom, okay? The, we got a, a toilet that's enclosed. This is a, a project that we designed, I think it was last year. So the, all of this stuff is in new locations, okay? These vanities are in a new location. The shower didn't even exist there. And this closet was there, but the configuration of how you went in or how you go in is, is a little different. So when you move plumbing fixtures around, when you, and when you move drains, particularly drains if you're on the second floor, moving a toilet, uh, moving a sink, moving gas lines, all of those things trigger uh, the, quite a bit of cost. So you want to move things very deliberately. You want to move it in order to get function, to uh, improve the aesthetics, and or both. Um, in some cases, um, you're moving things because you're you're adding them. Like in this shower, I think this shower was tiny. It was like a three by three, and it needed to be a handicap shower. So you can see where it's open and you can just kind of roll in a wheelchair in there, no problem. So you got to take these things into account. The more things you move around, the higher the construction costs get. So this is an example of, this is an example how you would leave things alone or move them less and it would be less money. So the one on the left I think has more function because the the vanities are separated from each other, the sinks are separate from each other, you have more workspace. Uh, the shower is, eh, shower is about the same size. Um, you're closing off a wind, you're, you're messing with this window here. So there's, you know, there's some pros and cons to, to each of them, but definitely this one here on the right will cost more. Um, to move to move all of these things around and move the drains. Sorry, this one was going to cost more. Leaving this the way that it is 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 cheaper. Um, there was already a drain here, by the way. That's where the old tub was. So under this scenario, we are we were converting the tub into a shower in its same place. But you know now you've got this area here that looks a little weird. You know, I mean, I, could it be a second closet or something like that? Of course. You know, so. I think uh, eventually they opted to go with this deal here with the more expensive because it solved more problems. All right, let's talk a little bit about our little work in progress. I'm going to give you some before pictures. This is the the project that um, I showed you at the beginning of the video. So this is kind of like a split view. It's a great shot, actually. To the left of the wall that we removed is the old kitchen and the dining area. And to the right is the living room and formal dining room. Close-up shot, wall skeletonized. By the way, on the left, you can see that all that rubble there. That mortar bed was about an inch and a half, could, could be two inches thick. 
And it's still cracked. It's still cracked. There were tiles that were cracked. There's um, grout lines that were cracked. All of that was because the floor was flexing. So when we see that, it is not negotiable. We must replace the subfloor. That's that's just how it goes. I I didn't do that on a job about four years ago, and I lived to regret it. It was nothing but pain and suffering. Look at this, how nice this looks. All new plywood. It's super sturdy. Um, we're going to eventually um, wrap all of the exterior walls here in structural one sheeting. So it's going to be very earthquake safe. Well, safe as you can make it. This is a close-up of our beam. Look at that thing. It's beautiful. It's massive. It is amazing. This little previous shot. Hey, your kitchen may look like this. Um, our, our homeowner, she's so nice, and she's been wanting this kitchen for a long time. They've lived in this house for a long, long time, and she's finally going to get her dream kitchen. And um, she's doing it while she's young enough to enjoy it. You, know, you don't want to wait so long that you're ready to kick a, kick the bucket, and uh, that, would, that would be not, not good. Anyway, uh, you, you know what I mean. It's important. It's important to have some time to enjoy it. So this is uh, what you looked like uh, during the kind of secondary phase of demo. And this is what she's going to look like. Look at all those cabinets. Wait a minute. Let me show you. Before. Can I show you? Because uh, these shots are very close. So you see this is one window here. There's another window here. And then there's cabinets in between the windows. And then there's cabinets and the refrigerator here. By the way, where this wall got removed, that's where the fridge is going to go. Watch this. Check this out. Voila. So to the left, you've got your tall cabinet to stick your like cleaning supplies and stuff. And um, you, you could have overflow of um, pantry stuff here, but most of your food items are going to be here. So you walk in here, you go to the island, you set your groceries there, you put them away in the pantry, and you put them away in the fridge. And uh, whatever you're going to cook for dinner, you leave out, and your stove's going to be here. Your sink is there. you got a wine fridge, dishwasher, and then all of the stuff that she had on the countertops, um, her appliances are all going to be in these deep cabinets, these deep drawers, so they all pull out. I think we've even got a, a really cool device where that mixer pops out from the cabinet. I'm really excited to do that because we haven't installed that yet. So I'm excited to see what that's gonna look like. And then up here you got a little glass to show your stemware because your, um, your dishwasher's down here. So you take your dishes out, pop them in there, and you're good to go. It's gonna be freaking awesome. We're probably 70% done with that. So I'm looking forward to sharing that with you. All right, so let's talk about our Los Angeles kitchen concept, Los Angeles Gardena. And like I said, we did a full video uh, drop on this, but the, uh, they elected to go with shaker cabinets. These are custom cabinets. And this is quartz um, prefabricated. Actually, no, this is not prefabricated. This is quartz countertop. And uh, we custom we custom made this, this piece here. I think those could have been prefabricated. Nice backsplash, great lighting. We installed flooring everywhere. They had hardwood floors before. This is porcelain floors. So we did a subfloor. Little farmhouse sink. By the way, if you want an apron sink like that, you got to tell us right away because the cabinet is built for that. Some nice pullouts. Very, these are the Le Mans. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, but they're super functional. For the dead corners, the blind corners, we definitely love those. They went with a beverage beverage fridge. Um, this is a microwave, and they put a beautiful, um, I think it was a Gen Air. There she is. She's beautiful. Double oven, grill top, beast of an extractor. It's cool. Super clean look. Look, this kitchen, it's not going to go out of style. This is a very classic look. You can, I, I, If you have ever gone into the Victorian houses that were built in the 20s, they have a shaker style door like that with some really cool handles, and it, it looks beautiful. And this is hard. These are hardwood. These are all custom. But the doors are made out of hardwood. 
Um, they're going to last a long time. If they get beat up over time because they're painted, we can have them professionally painted. Like let's say in six or seven years, maybe 10 years, they need a, a refreshing. You can give us a call and we'll come out and I'll have my pros tape out everything out and spray it and it'll look just as beautiful as the day we install it. That's one of the big advantages, by the way, of having kitchen cabinets that are painted. So this is the wall that we removed. You can see we put in a flush beam here, and then we there's another one, I think, uh, running at the perpendicular. But we were able to get that whole thing out, and um, it made a big difference. This house is not a very big house, by the way. This house, I think, is a little bit over a 1,000 square feet. So getting rid of that wall really created a really nice space for the family. So notice that where the sink was, the gen air is in now. The stove is in there now. So... We did replace that, but you know we knew we were going to open up the floors and we needed to fix the function. So we also got rid of that drop ceiling. Look at that, that funky, funky lenses on the drop ceiling. Got rid of that, and we put the we put the sink in front of the window. See, there's a window. You're looking out the window. That's kind of cool. That was one of the features the homeowner wanted. Be able to look out the window. Hey man, when you're looking out the window. Doing dishes is not that big a deal. I'm just throwing your dishwasher. All right, one more tip for a seismic retrofit. When you remodel your house, you really, really, really should consider uh, bolting down your place. We're recommending this for all of our new customers that are on a raised foundation and that have a house that was built before the 70s. You're probably going to spend somewhere between five and $8,000 if you want us to do a super duper crazy bolt down, it could be like a little bit more than that. It could be 12 grand. But for the most part, to bolt you down, get you tied in, get you safe, um, this is a good time to do it, okay? Especially if you're doing a major remodel. So consider that. We've got a bunch of videos on earthquake retrofitting and bolt down, so check those out. We will have a link for it below. Uh, this is just a little quick picture of what it looks like. Um, you can avoid thousands of dollars worth of damage by keeping your house on the foundation. I really, really urge you to educate yourself a little bit more on that. We don't install the earthquake gas shutoff balance, but if you don't have one, please get one. Brace down your um, water heater if you haven't done so already. What else? Oh, yeah, yeah. If you want a referral for the earthquake shutoff valve, uh, hit us up post on the comment below brian will hit you up and and s set you up with one of the vendors that we use for that it's 350 bucks something like that and it can save you literally tens of thousands of dollars by avoiding um a fire okay gas gas lines need to be protected with the earthquake shut off valve if you're bolting down your place this is what it kind of looks like i'm i did a whole video but if you're more if you're curious about that We'll put a link on there. just want to let you know. I want to bring awareness. It's important. Guys, we live in earthquake country. We live in earthquake country. Please take some precautions. Have some supplies ready. Have your little earthquake kit ready. And bolt down your house if you are on a raised foundation. So, this is the question time. Questions, questions, questions. Do we have any questions, Brian? What do we got? Uh, somebody would like to know how long does uh, the construction take for an open concept? Oh, open for concept, so it's going to be three or four months. It's going to take probably about two months, two and a half months to get your plans done. Uh, because you're removing the walls and all that stuff, yeah. So does that mean that they need to move out or they can live in place? No, you can live in place. Um, you can definitely live in place when you're, when you're removing the wall. You're just going to be... Well, okay, it depends. If you've got kids and dogs and animals and your house looks like a zoo like mine, it's going to be tough. But you can. But you can. Um, maybe 10, 15% of the people that get an open floor plan will move out. So most people will be able to live there. Yes. What else? Uh, how much are the plan check fees for a big project like this? About four, between $4,500 and $6,500 the cities will charge for the plant check fees and the building permits. So it's not cheap. Uh, there's, a lot, there's a lot of work to it. So you got to be 
You gotta have a budget big enough. Now you can remodel the kitchen without removing the wall. We're just talking about for those of you considering removing the wall, so just to educate you. Uh, one of, another one of our viewers wants to know how long does it take to get your plants approved? Depending on the city, but it is very common to go two, three months to get plants approved. If you're doing before, a whole before you even start construction. Before you even start construction, yeah. So let's say we can get you the plans drawn up in about four to six weeks. Then uh, we go to engineering. Engineering takes about, you know, let's say another month, and then it'll take maybe two, three months for the city to approve it. If you have major structural stuff, because it's got to go through public works and city planning and yada yada, all the different departments. It's a big rigmarole. By the way, I handle that. That's not your problem. That's for me to handle. What else we got? Uh, another another viewer wants to know about the uh, the bolt downs. How long does that usually take? Bolt downs, two to three days, could be a week. It depends on the extents, how extensive of a bolt down. And believe me, you can you can do quite a bit. You can add a lot more lumber. You can deal with any piers that are loose inside. Some of the houses, when we get in there, there's dry rot damage, and, you know, all of that stuff. So typically speaking, three days, could be four. And then if you go a little bit more extensive, could be about a week, could be a week and a half, something like that. And if your foundation is damaged, that's uh, that's eight weeks, and it's a totally different deal. You're going to bolt it down, but you're also going to, our engineer will create some engineering plans for the repair of the foundation. That'll take, could be a couple months. But bolt down, two to three days, could be five. What else? Uh, another viewer would like to know, when should you actually get this this type of project started? Like what part of the year? I, I think you can do this anytime. If you're not doing a home addition, then you don't have to worry about water coming in, so you don't have to worry about like doing this in winter time. Um, if you're just if everything is inside of the, the the shell of your house, you can do it any time of year. It's not a problem. Just just know that you want to get your plans in. Like we're coming towards the end of the year now, you want to get your plans in in the city by like December second, fifth, something like that soon, so that you can get the ball rolling. You can be ready to start for the new year. I think that I think that's that was everything. I think you answered all, right. all the questions. All right, cool, guys. Hey, thanks for joining us on the show. Thanks for watching. Please um, click like and subscribe. If you're watching us on YouTube, hit subscribe. Smash that button. Let's get started. Make sure to hit that little bell so they get notified. Yes, and hit the little bell. That little bell is there for notifications, so hit that little bell. If you want to learn more about um, construction projects, some of the things that we do, we've got... Well, I think we have over 400 articles now on BayCitiesConstruction.com. And uh, it's there for you. We created this library so that you can be better educated and understand what you're buying and what you're getting for your money. So check it out, BayCitiesConstruction.com. A little bit of information about us. I've been in business for over 15 years. Uh, it's my contractor's license there. And uh, we can help you with interior design. We can do the architectural engineering for you. We'll present you with the city. And obviously, we'll manage your project. You will be happy. You will have an amazing project. I guarantee it. My name is Alex Rodriguez. Reminding you to join us on Facebook and on YouTube. We're, we're trying to post uh, every month, excuse me, every week. We're trying to post every week. Uh, something new, something exciting. We want some ideas from you. If you've been wondering about a construction-related uh, question and you want us to do an episode on it, please uh, post a comment below. We'd love love your feedback. And this show is for you. You know, um, we definitely promote our business and we bring awareness of our business. But our methodology, our philosophy for our marketing campaign is that we give you value uh, with education regarding construction services and um, we want to create more content than you actually want to see so please um, share share with you share with us your ideas uh, for show topics or if you have any questions on what we did we definitely answer it we if you ask a question weeks or months after we post 
we will answer your question. All right. Thanks very much for joining us. Really look forward to talking to you if you've got a project or answering any questions. If you want to reach us, this is where we are. We're in Torrance, and that's our 800 number. If you want to see what other people are writing about us, complaining about us, it's all out there. It's, it's a free-for-all on the web. So check out our reviews on Howls and Yelp and all that good stuff. My name's Alex Rodriguez with Bay Cities Construction Mining. You, you don't need a contractor. We, we, before we go, what? we do want to give a little shout out to some of our friends that we saw at the Agla show in Pasadena. Okay, cool. Our, our friends at Spectrum Property Management, they came up to us and they said hello. They said they watch all of our videos. Oh, that's right. That's right. We did see some of you out there. Hey, it's always cool to see you at one of the trade shows. Um, and it's cool to interact, and, and I'm, I'm glad that some of you, many of you are finding value in what we do. It takes a lot of time to do this, and, I, and I'm so, so happy that many of you are, are finding value in it. So with no further ado, the, this concludes our show. We'll see you next week with another show. My name's Alex, reminding you, you don't need a contractor. You need a team of pros. Do you know that an, a big earthquake can produce a wave that's two feet tall? Hi folks, I'm Alex Rodriguez and I want to protect your house for $1.99 a month. I'm the owner of Bay Cities Construction and after visiting Ridgecrest, it's clear to me that you can prevent a tremendous amount of expensive damage by having a seismic retrofit done to your raised foundation. Have you ever wondered if your house needs to be bolted down? And have you ever wondered what could happen to your house if it's not braced and bolted down? Let's check this out. Let's get down to dirty. So this is how we do a bolt down. We bolt down the mud sill to the stem, then we connect the floor joist to the mud sill, and then ideally you connect the subfloor to the floor joist. That's the system to keep this connection intact while the floor is violently shaking. Our low cost financing makes this project affordable. The process is easy, it only takes one day. We live in earthquake country. Dr. Lucy Jones reminds us that earthquakes are random. We can't predict earthquakes, but we can prepare. Remember, it only takes $1.99 a month to protect your most valued investment. Get peace of mind with a Bay Cities Construction Seismic Retrofit. Protect your largest investment Go to BayCitiesConstruction.com and sign up today. My question to you is, can you over-engineer a house for an earthquake? Look at that. You tell me. The big question is, did we do enough? I'm Alex Rodriguez reminding you, you don't need a contractor. You need a team of pros. Hey, for those of you that know that I always have a little special offer after the show, I'm going to do your kitchen remodel design. Okay, your design, your interior design, I'm going to help you pick out your countertops, plumbing fixtures, paint colors, flooring, all of that stuff. I'm going to do it for $300. $299. $299. dollars And you're going to work with me. With me. But that's only for the first five people that book this deal before December 1st. It's going to be your early Christmas present from me to you, okay? 300 bucks, I'll help you do the design, help you figure out everything that's gonna go, floor plan, layout, you know, the layout, we're gonna figure out um, what your electrical situation is, everything, everything that you need to know about what it's gonna take to get your perfect kitchen for 300 bucks, okay? But I'm only gonna do the first five people that book it, so if you want to, go ahead and post or send Brian a message at brian at BayCitiesConstruction.com. Brian at BayCitiesConstruction.com. Tell them that you saw this episode. So this episode is October 29th. Or give us a call at 888-81-7355. My name is Alex, Bay Cities Construction. See you later. Bye. My name is Alex Rodriguez reminding you, you don't need a contract, you need a team of pros.